Hello and welcome back to another episode of Unheard. Um, when we left off, we had just solved the whole Wizard of Oz theater murder, um, in which the ghost of Emily was haunting the cast members and gave uh, Larry instructions to kill Sasha. Um, when we left off, she did not really give a clue as to what this would be about. All I know is that she said the real work will begin. So without further ado, let us click this tablet and get this started. The four events you just examined all happened in the past. Now, we need you to use the acoustic detective system to figure out a currently unsolved case. This one involves another explosion, only in a mental hospital, rather than a police station. It's, how should I put it, mm, peculiar. A number of agents have already attempted to solve it. None of them succeeded. And there were complications. Oh. Wait. Maestro was in the first one. And Emily... Okay, maybe they... I don't know. For someone to have the name Maestro, I feel like that's too much of a coincidence. So we have two questions here. Who are the real mental patients and then who is the ghost? So I'm not going to be like automatically saying Emily is the ghost because I don't know if this ghost is possibly connected to the Sasha thing, but let us, we're going to start in here. Hopefully we get some names. There's already three people in here. Um, I'm just trying to see what rooms are connected. So that's just the hallway. Oh, those rooms are connected. Oh, so this is like the, and how, I don't even know, I guess interview. I don't know. And then there's two people in here. This looks like an interview room. There's two people in there. Okay. Sorry, I'm just exploring really quick. So I know where I need to be going eventually. I mean, I'm probably going to have to go into every single room. Okay, there's two people in the bathroom. Okay, so we're going to start up here in the lobby. Uh, excuse if you can hear my cats. I had to lock him out of my room because he is very hyper right now. Okay, so let's go. Hello! Welcome in, officers. How can I help you? I heard your siren. I'm Elvira. This is my partner. Are you in charge here? Yeah, yeah. I am the administrator of this facility. To what do we owe this visit? You look a little young to be running this place. Anyway, we're here to investigate reports of an escape. Aha, uh -huh. yeah. About that. We're dealing with it internally. It's a minor incident. Not that big of a deal, really. Not that big of a deal. This is a mental institution. Some of our patients are highly agitated, and a few from time to time attempt to escape. This one happened to be successful. We have people out searching. But often the patients return on their own volition after a day or two. How did it happen? This time, I mean. Hmm. Let me recall. I was... Ah, right. We were having a therapy session when the patient suddenly picked up an ashtray and hit me on the head. Then jumped out the window. Your head seems fine to me. Oh, it wasn't a heavy blow. And in this profession, you must be prepared for these sort of outbursts. Roar with the punches, as they say. Uh, truth be told, this situation is very embarrassing, which is why I didn't want to call the police. You might not have called us, but someone did. You also confirmed that one of your patients escaped, which means we're now legally obligated to investigate. A psych case on the loose poses a threat not only to themselves, but to the public. Take us inside. We'll need to interview the other inmates. And get us their files. Interview? You want to talk to them? Where are the patients? 
Just show us the way and we can conduct the investigation ourselves. Well, if you insist. This way, please. Uh, we're just gonna follow them because I don't know if staying in here is gonna benefit me right now. Window break. This is where the patient escaped. Be careful of the glass on the floor. I need to see this patient's file. Ah, you mean patient number 68? What do you want to know, officer? I've spent so much time with everyone here that I can practically recite their files from memory. Hold up. Why is this gate open? No wonder you're trying to cover up how easy it is to slip out of here. All the doors are unlocked. Unlocked? Ah, yeah, that was me. I apologize. I was in such a hurry to greet you earlier, I forgot to lock it behind me. <laughs> oh. Don't worry, though. I've been here the whole time. I can assure you that no one else escaped. Let's check inside. This is our day room. As you can see, all our patients are quite well cared for. Wouldn't you say? Nice decor in board games doesn't change the fact that they're still stuck in a mental facility. Hey, new arrivals! Grab your clothes and toiletries! Huh? Who are you? None of your concern. Pick your seat and sit down. I don't want any trouble. Who's this guy? Patient number 27 has a non-bizarre grandiose delusional disorder. He thinks he's a caregiver here. The hospital is short-handed, so we usually leave him be. Saves us some hassle to hire more help. People here are more nutso than I thought. What's she doing? Watching TV. But the TV isn't even on. What's your name? <laughs> Patient 42 suffers from severe social anxiety that manifests as selective mutism. She talks to no one. Hmm. Neither of these two are going to be any help. Let's split up and canvas the rest of the place. Check the room over there, would you? How long does she do this? <laughs> I'll probably rewind and go back to like, them. Oh, I got an achievement. Cool. Uh, so we're gonna go back. Okay, and we're gonna follow... On it! <laughs> I'm gonna follow Elvira, because I already know her name. Are both of you patients here? Yes. Speak for yourself. I ain't no lunatic. But you are! I told you I ain't! What's going on here? Are you okay? It was my older brother. He has mental problems. Shut up! I'm as sane as ever! You're the crazy one! I'm crazy? Uh, sorry, officer. I was talking to my brother. All right, then. Ma'am, mind if I ask what you're in here for? I'm a reporter. Before you got sick, you mean. I actually did want to know what it was that got you committed. Are you a police officer? Yeah. Then, will you believe the things I'm about to tell you? Depends. Let me hear them first. I'm a reporter. A few months ago, I received a tip saying this hospital was conducting some kind of clandestine experiments on its patients. I disguised myself and checked in to investigate. I've collected all the information I need, but now I can't prove I wasn't sick in the first place or that I've recovered. So I'm stuck here with no way to publish my findings. Hmm. What exactly have you found? Here, they use a treatment method on their patients called TAT, thematic apperception test. But it's not the TAT most people know today. Rather, they use the prototype used back during World War II. Basically, it brainwashes people. After the test, patients' memories will be completely erased and they're conditioned as well. They're programmed to respond to certain sounds, after which they'll follow any command. The hospital then goes on to claim they've been cured, but the truth is, they're nothing more than soulless robots. Tell me, officer, if you were a patient, would you want to be cured that way? You've absolutely got to get me out of here. I have to expose them. Check my notes. I've got all the evidence right here. I gotta say, that sounds more like a sci-fi flick than reality. All right, let me see your notes. 
Wow. Don't skimp on details, do ya? Let me ask you something else. You ever notice any patients in here who seem like they don't belong? Like they're faking their illness? Yeah. Me. And besides you? Honestly? From what I've seen, at least 44% of the patients here are actually sane, but they've been committed regardless. Makes me think this hospital's next step is to experiment on normal people. That's quite the theory. What about him, huh? Seems pretty legit. Schizophrenia, maybe. He's sick, but it's not schizophrenia. You made a mistake any layman would make. What he has is called dissociative identity disorder. That's where you have multiple personalities. In his case, two. Huge difference between that and well, schizophrenia. what's his name? <laughs> I see. That I'll have to remember. Wait just a second. Aren't you getting me out of here? Afraid I can't. At least, not yet. I'll come back once our investigation wraps up. <sighs> you don't believe me either, do you? Why are you even bothered? Journalists are the watchdogs of society. Or haven't you heard? Yeah, and what good did any of that do you, huh? The cops didn't even believe you. <laughs> You've heard about the Unabomber, correct? Huh? Who do you think I am? Of course I heard of him! Mm-hmm. Henry Murray, the inventor of TAT, used his test to evaluate soldiers during World War II. Huh. During the Cold War, he used it to interrogate spies. But did you know that he also gave it to innocent students back in 1959? Oh, yeah? What's all that got to do with the Unabomber? Are you kidding me? Well, it just so happens that a certain 17-year-old boy, Ted Kaczynski, was one of his unwitting test subjects. And, well, you know the rest. Over a period of 18 years, he ended up making and sending at least 16 bombs. What I'm trying to say is, destroying someone mentally can have repercussions far beyond one person. Well, I'll be damned. Then that Henry Murray fella's got blood on his hands, too. I don't know if I'd go that far. Science and all the experiments that go along with it are... Well, they're not wrong. It's just that sometimes people can get in so deep that they lose track of the boundaries of morality. I have nothing against the doctors here. Really. I simply want to get the truth out. It's my hope that people can learn to respect humanity while still pursuing science. You move me. A reporter with a heart of gold. <laughs> you know, if Mr. Director had his say, he'd just... Shut up! He told you not to tell anyone! All right, all right, all right. My lips are sealed. Is that all they say? Uh, oh, wait. Uh, thanks. I need to up uh, my... Uh, I'm gonna go back to the beginning, because I want to know if they talk. Nelly. Nelly. What you're writing, huh? What's going on outside? I heard a bunch of people talking, but then it went quiet. Ah, that was Mr. Director telling us about the test. He said we gotta take over the hospital so we can put a stop to it. Also, something about, you know, how the doctors are all actors, and we're really... Shut up! He told us not to tell anyone, didn't he? The doctors are all Whatever. actors? Whatever. I don't even want to know. <sighs> Look, you upset her. It's all your fault. I told you to shut up! Hey, Nelly, don't be mad. What's your writing? Seriously. You wouldn't understand even if I told you. I know what she's writing. Oh, yeah? And how the hell will you know, huh? You ain't her. Well, you ain't me either. How do you know I don't know? Exactly. I ain't you, so I don't uh, know if you know enough. What? But you certainly ain't her, so you don't know squat, you big ignoramus. Silver spoon. Oh, so you finally decided to talk to me, huh? Do you know who you are? I'm, uh, me, I guess. Is his name Silver <laughs> No, you Spoon? aren't. I'm me. For once, think before you answer. It's not easy. That's why Mr. Director's so terrified about the test. Wait, you know about the test too? 
Why wouldn't I? Uh, I'm it's call, called I'm T-A-T, label him spoon right now. and it involves a series of repeated questions that try to get the test subject to make up a logical story based on their own desires, emotions, motives, and personal experiences. Most participants end up projecting their own subconscious onto a character in the made-up story without even realizing it. <laughs> so, that's what it is. Doesn't sound like such a big deal to me. Yes, and it wouldn't be if it were just that. The problem is, this hospital is doing more than just a simple test. Something much more... intense. Huh? Like what? They put extreme pressure on the test subjects, causing them to lose themselves in the stories they make up. Even once the test is over, they lose track of reality, which can lead to the development of multiple personalities. And those whose minds are already weak, they lose track of who they are altogether. Textbook Spoon? delusional right there. Did Spoon did that too? Ha! Well, I'll be. No wonder Mr. Director's about to shit his shorts. Don't concern me, though. Oh, yeah? Then how about this scenario? Deep down, you, me, all of us constantly struggle with our own issues. Pretty normal, right? Well, during the test, people tend to project those conflicting thoughts onto different characters in the stories they make up. Each thought becomes its own character, constantly engaged in a bitter, back-and-forth argument with its other half. Until, finally, they lose the ability to become one again. That's impossible. Wait, is she talking about us? I'm calling BS! Hey, don't look at me. I'm not the one running the tests. I just wanted to let you know to be prepared. And more importantly, don't forget who you are. Now I'm actually kind of intrigued. Sounds a little, I don't know, fun. No one's ever been able to give me a run for my money before. Why does he sound like the Joker? Oh, what do you know? It sounds like some kind of, I don't know, metaphysical test. Metaphysical, my ass! It's a scam, pure and simple. And you can't bullshit a bullshitter. I am unscammable! Oh, shut up. I need to think. Think it never did you any good. Metaphysical. <laughs> Whatever. Ooh, I'm gonna hit the hay. Okay, so I'm assuming... But I'm yeah, so we've already listened to this conversation. ...and all the experiments that go along with it are... Well, they're not wrong. It's just that sometimes people can get in so deep that they lose track of the boundaries... ...of society. I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I'm gonna far beyond one person. Well, I'll be damned. And that Henry Murray fellow's got blood on so his hands really too. To this part. I don't know if I go that far. Science and all the experiments that go along with it. Doctor, still pursuing science. Yeah. So we were here to when they were quiet. Two. You hear that? Oh, you can hear it too. Thought it was just in my head. No, it's definitely real. Sounds like it's coming from next door. All of your hearing things need to up your meds. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna say Nelly and I'm gonna put spoon question mark because I'm not sure if that's spoon. I'll go check. Oh, she leaves? Does Spoon say anything while he's here by himself? She called you psychotic. She did not! Nelly said, I have disassociative identity disorder. Yeah, but that's another crazy disease, too! Whatever, I never liked her anyway. Nothing but BS coming out of her mouth. Once I inherit our old man's business and money, I'm gonna hire someone to cap her ass. Don't say things Wait, like that. What? That's a one-way ticket to jail. Seriously, if you pin this all on me again, I'll boo-hoo! As if you've never thrown me under the bus. You were a brat when we were little, and you're a brat now! Oh, what's a couple of misdemeanors? The old man will forgive me over time. Besides, once you're put away for life, I'll be the only heir. I'll have a proper business to run. Get out of here! What the hell do you know about running a business? Hmm. All I'm saying is leave me 
out of this. You got it? Then get the fuck out! Stop following me! Did you talk to the police, Silver Spoon? I did! I did too. Did you notice anything strange? That lady cop had a real attitude. Kept saying I had schizophrenia. Well, you've got it! You're a complete schizo! Don't interrupt me. Just... just stop talking already. I don't know who these are Both at all. of you are giving me a headache. The cop that questioned Silver Spoon was a chick, Mr. Director. That means there's more than one of them. You think they're on to us? Maybe we change the plan? Make a run for it while we still can? I mean, the gate is wide open. No, the show can't end like this. Don't you want to know the truth? After all this time, the lies, the manipulation, don't you crave retribution? Lies ain't the half of it. They probably want to steal my company while I'm not there too. Your company? When did it become your company, huh? Oh, shut up about your stupid company. No one cares. Yeah, well, either way, it's time for the doctors here to pay up. Right you are about that. Our plan is already in motion. With the doctors under our control, all we need to do is wait for the police to leave. Then this hospital will be ours. Yeah, well, I still don't get how the police knew to show up at just the right moment, you know? Someone must have ratted on us. Hmm, you make a good point. Who could have called the police then? George? Nah, he was already in with the maestro before any of us even did anything. Probably doesn't even know what's going on. Huh. Jennifer then? Well, this could turn out bad for us. If the cops were to search the bathroom... Jennifer? No, it can't be her. I, I stole a phone. What? I thought I told you to lock her up. Not... He said he stole her phone, right? Us. If the cops were to search the bathroom... Jennifer! No! Oh, I can't be her! I, I stole a phone! So, we're gonna say question mark, stole Jennifer's phone. Okay. What? I thought I told you to lock her up, not steal her phone. Give it here. <laughs> hmm. Recent calls. Well, the last call she made wasn't to 911. Why don't we try calling it? You can't just do that. We don't know who it'll call. <laughs> then what are you looking at me for? Hand it over. <sighs> and whose phone is this, hmm? <laughs> From that stupid cop earlier. Uh, but, you know... So... Jennifer called the cops. What? Here's what's really weird. Who calls a cop directly rather than 911? You stole this from the police? How many other phones have you stolen? Uh, I, 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 I don't got any more phones. Why does this sound like Chip? But, but I, I do have this. <laughs> you are a real piece of work. Why would you steal a TV remote? Got it from Ray earlier. It, it, it just, it looks like a phone, you know? It even fits in your hand like one. I, I couldn't resist! Huh? Uh, that a police siren? Which part of stick to the script don't you understand? If you would have just followed your lines, you wouldn't have run the risk of getting us all into trouble. Now, if the police come back here, our plan is ruined. All our efforts down the drain. I'll keep the doctor's phone for now. You return both of those, but don't get caught. But I never learned to to, to to return stuff. Make it happen. All right, all right. That's odd. We've been here for a while now, but there's been no sign of Nellie. There was some kind of weird sound earlier, so she went to check. Probably went to the bathroom. It was indeed the... Wait, to the bathroom, you said? So the TV is what blows up. But I need to go to the bathroom and listen to this. So the person they're talking to isn't Mr. Director.
Who's that knocking? Ray, what are you doing here? Who did this to you? I'll explain everything later. Quick, untie me. I can do that, but only on one condition. Just say it. Wh whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Within my power, of course. You need to prove to everyone else that I'm not crazy so I can get discharged. Consider it done. I knew you weren't crazy a long time ago. Perfect. Then you can get me out of here. Well, I I'll do my best, but, but remember, I'm just a caregiver. The doctors are the ones who have the final say. Oh, speaking of doctors, Jennifer's in the room next door. We gotta save her, too. Dr. Jennifer? <coughs> Doctor? Doctor, wake up! <coughs> Where am I? What happened? Someone apparently knocked you out. Got some blood on you there. I remember that much. So Ray and but Jennifer are the real why am I doctors? In the Can't help you there. Wait, you weren't out cold, Ray. What happened? Huh? huh? Hey, what are you- uh, Ray! What the fuck? You killed her! She'll be fine. Anyway, better her than us, right? What are you even talking about? What's going on? Okay, so here's what happened. While you were treating patient number 68 earlier, you remember that, right? I was talking with James. The two of us heard this loud noise all of a sudden, so, so I went to check. Turns out 68 broke the window and took off. By the time I came to check up on you, you were already out cold. I had this cracked ashtray next to you, too. This got me all in a panic. So I didn't notice that the gate to the inpatient sector wasn't locked. Next thing I knew, a, a bunch of patients had all gotten out. They, they charged me, tied me up, and threw me in the bathroom. Then, then they dragged you in, after I was tied up. Jesus Christ. Then, Nellie was in on this too? She doesn't really strike me as the violent type. I don't know about that, but I'm not taking any risks. They're all crazy. Who knows what they're capable of? But what is it they're trying to do? And why didn't you call the police um, when I'm you had the- I'm gonna pause this real quick. I'm gonna hit answer. So it doesn't tell you how many, either. Great. Because if I were to say, like, Ray, yeah, so I just know 44%. See, this one's only one choice, and then that one has multiple. Chance. Everything happened so fast. One second, I was trying to figure out what happened to you. The next, those psychos jumped me. Huh? Where's my phone? This guy has Don't it. Don't tell me they took it. Oh, wait. Oh. God damn it, it's gone! What? <sighs> Not my phone, something else. Uh, 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 you know, caregivers aren't allowed to bring phones inside the hospital. You know, that's the that, That's the, the TV well, that's remote. Stupid. What do we do now, then? We can't even call the police. How many people did you see in here earlier? Don't tell me everyone is in on this. Uh, I saw Clep, Silver Spoon, Oscar, oh right, and Mr. Director. I'm telling you, it was chaos. There might have been more of them. I don't know. And all of them working together? They're not even suffering from the same illness. This is certainly a first. What do you think they're trying to do? Escape? So, uh, they, they took the keys, but as far as I know, they haven't left. All I could tell was that Mr. Director seemed to be the ringleader. Something about m manipulation and brainwash. Then it's a coup? A coup? What does that yeah, mean? Yeah, they want to take over the hospital. That's why they didn't escape. You haven't seen George, have you? Nope. Maybe he's still in the treatment room? Is that an alarm? Uh, probably somebody's alarm clock. I wouldn't worry about it. Then what do we do? It's only a matter of time before they find us here. Honestly, I think the two of us can hold them off. Klepp, he's basically a stick. Oscar's a wuss. Silver Spoon's lucky if he isn't fighting himself. And Mr. Director, he's an old man. The only reason they got the jump on me last time was because they, they caught me off guard. But you and I, we'll have the element of surprise next time. Why don't we just sneak into the director's office and use the landline to call the police? Hey, good idea. Come on, let's go. Stay calm. We've got... Why don't...
Okay. Um. Still don't know who her partner is. Wasn't there someone back in here? Or was it this room? Okay, let's see. Who's in here? Why is it you wanted me to meet you here, George? Actually, I wanted to ask you a favor, Maestro. You're an expert when it comes to art, yes? I was hoping you could evaluate a painting for me. <laughs> You've come to the right person. Not to boast, but uh, a piece's price can increase considerably if I say good things about it. Of course, of course. Please, sit. The picture's right here. If you could just take a look. What is this? This isn't artwork. This is a map? Indulge me, if you would. And listen to the music. What? Anything? Excuse me? Excuse me? This is the music for the game. Is this whole thing a test? Wait. I need to uh, get my thoughts straight. Uh, take your time. Are we serious here? This is really weird, guys. I kind of want to like skip through a little bit because it keeps repeating. Yes. Okay, so it are the police and an intent. I I see it now. Tell me. What do you see? I see a an interrogation. Yes. Inside a police station. Who are the police interrogating? I don't Oh, wait. Yes. I know this voice. If he makes a reference to the Silver Spoon? What are they questioning Silver Spoon about? Something about drugs. It, yes, I remember Silver Spoon mentioning this before. Excellent. Wait. Let's move Hold on. on. The next picture. Silver Spoon. Two personalities. Twins. First case. Drugs. Solved. Done. Okay, cool. We got it. Sorry. Another one? What about the painting you said I was here to evaluate? What's going on? What are you doing to me? Don't worry, Maestro. It's just a small test. One more picture, and we're done. Uh, uh, another map? Do you recognize this place? It looks familiar. Uh, yes, I know. Uh, An art gallery describe the art gallery case two the art thief it's crowded an exhibition will start soon wait there's an empty frame but why exactly why is that give me just a a moment no no it can't be that either but then, who took it? The, the real painting? It's fine. Take your time. So, basically, this is telling me that what we're doing right now is what's happening in this room with George and Maestro. Obviously, we have to actually solve the case, so... I have a feeling this little moment right here is going to be really important. Once we, let's see. It's gonna be really important once we actually solve the case, because I feel like. Oh, 
There's gonna it's be something. Sean! Yes! <laughs> nice to see you again. Oh? And Ms. Reeves is here too. This is straight up the second case. Was stolen. Someone stole my painting. No, no, that's not it. I had my own painting stolen. It, it was part of my exhibition. I spent so much time and effort on my painting. I would never let someone steal it. It was all part of my plan. <laughs> yes, the painting was retrieved in the end too. The lost art return. I'm afraid your symptoms haven't improved. What are you talking about? Didn't you ask me to evaluate paintings for you? This was an evaluation, except it was a psychiatric one. We call it the thematic apperception test. So this is what Nellie was what? talking about. A psychiatric evaluation? Yes, tailor-made for your symptoms. I also use role-play therapy to supplement the effects. Unfortunately, the results are far from promising. I... Are they just admitting What's Maestro right now? Wrong with me, exactly. We used images to hypnotize you, allowing you to see and hear things from your past. When you saw an interrogation, you could remember the story Silver Spoon told you. The problem is, when you saw the image reflecting yourself, you weren't able to differentiate between delusion and reality. You sank further and further into your own fantasy story, so that's... allowing you to escape from the bleakness of your own reality. So what he's saying is, ah, oh, you recall this because Silver Spoon gave you uh, the story, right? So what if we are a patient? We listen to Silver Spoon. We listen to Maestro. What if the person humming is Emily? Because I haven't heard anyone mention Emily. So then what if Emily's a ghost and she told us about the stuff with Sasha? Because then that would connect us back to that case. But I don't know how we would get to the, uh, the, police, the police bombing. You staged the whole theft. Quite a coincidence, and a little too convenient, don't you think? George, doctor, what you said, I don't quite understand. Don't worry about it. You know everything you need to know. Now, answer me one question. Who are you? I'm the ma... No. No, I'm mm. patient number 29. Yes. There you go. Perfect. Now, just make sure you keep taking your medication on time. And trust me, you will get better. All right. All right. Wait. Why does he go to sleep? Patient 29 shows little improvement. If anything, his symptoms may be worsening. For situations with which he has an anecdotal connection, he is able to discern the projected narrative from reality. But in cases where he has direct experience, his ability to distinguish between the two is severely blurred. Prognosis remains guarded. I strongly recommend continued treatment with antipsychotic medications, as well as TAT and role-playing therapy to see if conditions improve. And we should schedule him for a full reassessment in six weeks' time. Okay, so he's just sleeping the whole time. So now if I follow George... Who are you? 
How did you get in? I'm a police officer. We're here to investigate a case. Police? Who let you in? Do you have a search warrant? Of course I do. It's right in here. Right there. Just on that table over there. Ah! Why'd you knock out George? What did he do? Was in the way. Wanted to see our search warrant. See if he's got the key on him. So Elvira isn't a police officer at all. Here, found them. Tony and I will check out room four. You clean this up. On it. Okay, so. Okay, I'm gonna go back. What's it all about, huh? I'm gonna go back to the beginning and listen to what happens in here. It. What took you so long? I, I got a business deal. I'll take it care of now, though. Business deal? I told you to lock those two in the bathroom. That's uh, uh I, I did. I, I did. Don't 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 worry. But uh, but what what about George? Huh? We take care of Jennifer and Ray, but leave George. Shouldn't we lock him up too? George is conducting one of those brain goggle sound experiments on the maestro. If we interrupt them, there's a chance we'll fry our friend's mind. Fine, well, let him be for now. But what if the police decide to barge in there later? I've made arrangements. Oscar will try to send him away. Should he fail, he'll lead the police to us. When that happens, I need you to give a winning performance. <laughs> Don't you worry I about like that. Oscar's the I one out there with them. I may not be an actor or anything, but I'm an ace at improv. Hey, well, now what hit him? Perfect. First, we'll take control of the hospital. Then, we'll rescue Maestro. Seriously, though, that test Maestro went to, what's it all about, huh? You guys keep saying he's fucked. What the hell did they do to him in there? I didn't know much about it myself until I spoke to Nellie. She calls it a thematic apperception test, or TAT. TAT? What's with all the acronyms nowadays? Can't hardly tell what the hell something is. I don't even know it's legit. You know Nelly. She throws Dr. Mumbo Jumbo like this around all the time. Full of shit, if you ask me. Who's to say she's not just making shit up on the fly? You really gonna believe a windbag like her? On this matter? Yes. It's like I told you already. This isn't a real hospital. No, this is nothing more than a reality show. And the reason you don't remember is for exactly this reason. The test. That TAT has brainwashed all of you. You don't even remember who you really are. Brainwashed? The hell? Yes, all of us. We were participants in this theater verite. Over time, the rest of the crew, mm. the true evil behind us, manipulated our gray matter using these so-called tests. They made us believe we were mental patients. Mental patients! Fortunately, my experience as a director allowed me to see through their wiles and maintain my true sense of reality. A professional like me can spot an amateur from a mile away. No wonder those doctors keep telling me I'm sick. <laughs> these doctors, they used these tests to toy with our brains, giving us all sorts of wild hallucinations. Hmm. Once our heads are adequately scrambled, they give us a new identity. By doing so, they keep us trapped in this never-ending reality show, day by day losing more of our hold on reality. In short, the doctors aren't real doctors, and we aren't real patients. We're nothing but actors in this twisted, you know, Ray, cruel Jennifer production. Jennifer George are not We're patients. We're the actors? I thought Oscar was the only actor in this place. Are you both patients here? Oh, oh God! Oh God! My stomach! I, 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 sorry! I, 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 hey. I gotta go. 
And just where do you think oh, you're sorry. going, pal? Sit back down. You can leave when I say oh. you can leave, which is after you've answered my questions. Okay, okay. Whatever you say. Both of you sit down and behave yourselves. I want you to answer the officer's questions. Also, officer, I don't understand what you hope to gain by interrogating these patients. That's a nice costume you got there, officer. Pretty convincing, even. Your lines, on the other hand, have room for improvement. You can't start off that strong. You lose any sense of foreshadowing. Just makes the audience feel off. We've nicknamed patient 49 Mr. Director. Believe it or not, he suffers from something called the Truman Show Delusion. The what? In his mind, he's making a masterpiece, and we're all just actors. We rely on role-playing therapy to treat patients like these. Trying to interrupt or correct him would just get us nowhere. But if Still we still need to figure out who these people come are, down soon enough. Mr. Director, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Who are you, really? Look me straight in the eye. That's how you do it. Much better, much better. You gotta have a quiet sense of intimidation. You don't need a shout to be coercive. Go back and re-enter through the door. Let's shoot this scene again. What the hell? Please, officer, he meant no harm. Remember, I mentioned some of our patients are likely to initiate contact. Well, what about that one, huh? Mr. Bathroom Emergency. Was that real or just some excuse so he could leave? Him? <laughs> He's a thief. Hey! Uh, that, 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 that's defamation, you hear me? I'm a law-abiding citizen. Behave! Patient number 36 suffers from an impulse control disorder commonly known as kleptomania. He simply cannot stop himself from stealing. Well, what's his name? Doesn't matter the person or place. Ha! <laughs> I didn't realize sticky fingers were a disease. But he's already in here, so why'd he try to run? Old habits die hard, I suppose. This one was constantly being hounded by the police, arrested multiple times. The sight of you probably triggered a conditioned response from him. Uh, bullshit! Just ask around, when did I ever get caught, huh? Ha, you're saying you never got caught? Then why did you end up here, hmm? He does sound like Chip, though. He's a repeat though. offender, you see. Always stealing old phones. See, always the stealing old so phones? That they gave him a psychiatric evaluation. And wouldn't you know See, it? See, like the case three. Whenever the... No. Yeah, case three. Whenever the police station blew up. Like I said, that sounds like Chip. This guy just says, oh, he has an old habit of stealing phones. Remember when Chip stole Dwight's phones at the bomb off? Go boom. Like, yeah. That's... But it, obviously... I don't know if his name's just going to be Klep, though. Because Kleptomaniac. So, I'm just going to add that. And then... I have a feeling this is Oscar, because I said, oh, we have Oscar taking care of the police, so acting, we'll see. He was certifiable, so instead of sending him to prison, they sent him here. Quite the nutcase, I see. Yeah, well, we are doing our best to treat them. Let's check the next room. Can you say anything else before? Because they leave, and we already know what they say down there. should have moved on by now. You want me to take a look, Mr. Director? No, you should stay here. Oscar will handle everything. Yeah, but something don't feel right. That cop from earlier felt like he was checking if we were crazy or not. I mean, for real crazy. You think the hospital sent them? Hmm, you may be under something. After all, everyone in this hospital, barring us, of course, was sent by the hospital. They're all part of the masquerade. No wonder he acted so weird. The only thing a cop ever gave me before were a pack down and a pair of cuffs. None of those weird questions. I thought we got you on our side to see through his disguise. I was about ready to piss my pants. Honest to God, you know how I feel about five O's. Real cops, fake cops, none of it matters. This hospital wants to drive us crazy, literally. Maybe we should simply play along? Once today's over and we've taken control of this place, the truth will finally be revealed. Then let me go check it out! 
If they're gone, we can get started with the plan. Hush, what did I just tell you? For now, we lay low. Boring! Okay, so that conversation ended. Why? Wait, someone comes in now. How was I doing, Mr. Director? Like a real professional, yeah? It was an exceptional performance. Not only did you deliver your lines with passionate bravado, your improvisation was on point. Always adjusting your lines and tones to correspond with the other actor's delivery? You truly are a master thespian! Yeah, well, you didn't have to give me such a hard time! Sorry. Occupational hazard. Once I get in character, I'm no longer reciting lines. I am the character. I feel like now, this is Oscar. To breath, but <laughs> that wasn't even the best performance I ever given. For most of my roles, I've done months of research. If I had more time, I'd have checked myself into a real mental hospital for at least six months. Stanislavski's system pushes me to fully embody my characters by learning how they really live. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, what about the cops? Have they left? Good thing you heard the siren and figured out a plan quick. If you hadn't sent me out there to stall them, God knows what they would have found by now. What are they even investigating? The runaway patient? Yeah, that's what they said. But, at least to me it seemed like that was just a cover-up. They didn't even check out the room where number 68 escaped. They barely even looked out the window, too. Nope. Both of them went straight to the patient rooms. You don't think they're looking for Jennifer? Could they be on to our plan? Wait, what? At first, that's what I thought, too. But now, not so sure. Seemed more like they were going around looking for someone sane. Then they've lost their minds as well. Looking for sane people inside a mental hospital? Cops are a bunch of idiots anyway. I'm gonna go out and check again. I'll let you know. I'll go check room one as well. Let's go. Don't, don't, don't wait for me. So that's when they go in there. The gate. Get your ass back to the day room. For crying out loud. <laughs> What does he say when Oscar comes by? James? You! Stay away from the gate! Get your ass back to the day room! For crying what out loud! Did he you? say a name? Hold on. James? You! Stay away from the gate! Get your ass back to the day room! For crying out loud! Hey. Told you to stop! Where do you think you're going? What the hell's going on? Why were the police here? Things are getting out of control. I was just playing along with Mr. Director and the other crackpots, right? Figured if we really did take over the hospital, it'd be much easier to look for ghosts. No way it's a coincidence. You notice anything off about those cops? Well, they were definitely looking for someone. That much was obvious. But the way they were interrogating every single patient makes me think they're after Ghost, too. Why would the authorities suddenly be searching for him? Until we got that tip, everyone thought he was dead. Maybe they got it, too. Anyway, what have you found so far? I haven't locked down Ghost yet, but I did find his plan B. Plan B? Pure coincidence, so actually. Isn't... The TV remote went missing, you see, and the button on the TV doesn't work, either. It got me curious, so one day I volunteered to cover Ray's night shift. After everyone left Think the room, okay, so I opened the TV. I was taking it too literal. It's not who is a ghost. It's ghost is like a code name for someone. I'm going to say it's Ray because remember he says, oh, something's missing. Clep is the one who stole something from Jennifer. Like she, He stole the phone. Ray doesn't specify what's missing. But then he later says keys. However, James over here is talking about the TV and the remote. So I'm assuming Ray is going to be ghost. So I'm going to have to figure out who the real mental patients Second, are in a minute. Guess what I found? A bomb. Bingo! Anyone turns that thing on, it'll explode. 
I bet that's probably why he took the remote. That's further proof it was Ghost who blew up the police station. To kill his crew and fake his own death. But why would he plant another one in the same place he's hiding? That's why I said it must be his plan B. Sure, the hospital's been a safe place to lay low, but someone clearly knows he's still alive. Otherwise, they wouldn't have put a bounty on his head and we wouldn't be in here. Ghost probably planted the bomb for just such an occasion as this. He can blow the place sky high and vanish into the wind again. Poof! Sounds right up his alley. Anyone who sees his face dies. Not this time. So they changed it from <laughs> ghost to raven? What the hell is that thing? Looks like some kind of sci-fi gizmo. It's a microcontroller infrared scrambler. Got it from a catalog for $29.95. Batteries not included. I don't get it. This is my plan B. When Ghost tries to blow this whole place to smithereens, this thing will jam the signal from the remote. The TV won't go boom, and we grab whoever's holding the clicker. Now that's smart. Then all we have to do is cuff him and collect our reward before the cops swoop in and steal all the credit. Huh? Is that the alarm? What the hell? I didn't even know this hospital had an alarm system. Stupid cops. They probably triggered the trap that Ghost set up. Fuck. Months of work down the drain. What do we do now? Ghost is gonna have to make a move now. So let's go nab the son of a bitch. All right, I'll follow your lead. The day room is the best place to start. He ain't in the library or the exam rooms, so he'll have to come through there before he can escape. So Clep goes to turn on the TV. You gotta turn that thing on before you can watch it. <laughs> There's this thing What's called that? a You're remote. You're holding, Emily. Don't do this stop! to me! Okay. So... Okay, now we gotta find where this McMurphy is, which I'm assuming he's in here. Oh, I know, I know. But you gotta wait till after I get out. I got no money in this shithole. Hey, you wanna do business with me? You do it my way. That means no credit. I already made an exception. Let me try out the phone. And now that you know it works, you gotta pay So out. McMurphy called them. Don't be a rat. All right, fine. How about I just give it back, huh? Then you can sell it to someone else. Yeah, I, I, I can live with that. Hand it over. Wait. Before you leave, do you know if they caught patient number 68 yet? The one who escaped? Uh, nope. Not as far as I know. What about the police? They here yet? Now that you mention it, Mr. Director did say he heard a, uh, siren. Perfect. Anyway, Here's your phone. Okay. You cocksucker! I'm gonna kill ya! Against that. Anybody in there? Who the fuck's out there? You get in here, you cocksucker! I'm gonna kill ya! I'm gonna kill all of ya! Be dangerous. He suffers from episodes of acute mania and violent psychosis. I told you to open this door. Just do it. All right, all right. Just give me a second. I need to find the key. Which one was it again? Is this one? Not this one. This will only take a second, I assure you. Ah, here it is. Great. Open it up. Out here. Who the flying fuck are you? I'm gonna straight up bash your fucking brains in. All right. I'm gonna need you to calm down, sir. You get that fucking duck away from me, you hear? He fucked me up. I can't think straight. 
I'm gonna slit his fucking throat, you hear that, huh, Doc? Huh? I'm gonna fucking murder you! Tell the doctor he can leave, Elvira. I feel like Elvira could be a patient because Elvira is like, she could have seen on the TV. He's gone. It's safe to talk now. Damn, Tony, Tony, my man. Look at you in uniform. Could have fooled even me. Keep your voice down. Though, uh, I could say the same about you. You almost gave me a scare with all that crazy talk. What's it called again? Rabies, idiot. Elvira. Charming as always, I see. Jokes aside, what have you found? There's a whole lot of people out there that have got their eyes on Ghost's secret stash. You look around at all? Ah, eh, not much. Already talked to two patients. Crazy guy called Mr. Director and some thief. Gotta say, they both seem totally fucked up, to put it mildly. What about you? Who did you talk to? Just some delusional reporter. Oh, and a schizophrenic called Silver Spoon. Just like you said, though, both a hundred percent loony. Guess we're on the same page, then. Wait, so you haven't found anything yet? So he's undercover? So why'd you call us up here? I didn't see him, but I know where to find him. How so? Process of elimination. At first, I didn't know what to do. No one seemed to be faking it. But then I discovered seclusion room number four at the end of this very hallway. Never seen it unlocked, but I know someone's inside because the caregiver brings food there twice a day. So I played the manic card and I beat up a doctor named George, which got me thrown in here. Now I can keep an eye on things from the privacy of right next door. And if all the other patients are legit crazy, whoever's in that room is ghost. I mean, the logic fits, right? Mm. Well, look at you, Sherlock McMurphy. All right, then. Time to see who's behind door number four. Get the key from the doctor, Elvira. Wait. Something doesn't add up. What about the escaped patient? Patient number 68. Could he be ghost? Nah. Think about it. Why would Ghost want to get out? He got himself committed on purpose, remember? To hide from people who want his money and his life. He knows he's a dead man if he gets out. You have a point. Okay, I'll get the key. Hey, I've got a question for you. Your hospital gown doesn't even have a pocket. Where'd you get the phone to call us? That, my friend, is courtesy of Klepp. You met him? He gave you a phone? Klepp is... how should I put it? I guess right. He's definitely crazy. But man, oh man, can that fucker steal. All he's got to do is greet a doctor, and he's got their phone. No wonder he tried to get close to me earlier. Bumped into me, actually. In fact, wait, where's my phone? <laughs> Jesus. Big time hitman got played by a small time thief. Hey, why'd you knock out George? What did he do? Was in the way. Wanted to see our search warrant. See if he's got the key on him. Here, found them. Tony and I'll check out room four. You clean this up. On it. Uh, 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 That's so uh, awkward. Oh, maybe one of the bigger ones? Hello? Anybody in here? We... Come on out already. What? What? Empty. He escaped them? What's going on here? Don't tell me our ghost made like a ghost. This doesn't make any sense. This room's at the very end of the hall. He'd have to go by my room to get out. And I've had eyes like a hawk on that door this whole damn time. Hell, I was still paying attention during that whole crazy act earlier. No, man, something's not right. Look at the dust on the floor. 
Gotta be at least an inch thick. What if the only sets of footprints see, in here are Ray yours and mine? No one's been in here for a long food. time. Well, I'll be damned. But there's no way in hell I was wrong. Let me check again. No one under the bed. Huh. What about this big chest here? You don't think he hid the money in it, do you? A chest? Wait, don't touch it! What the? A trap! That fucker played us like a fiddle. Now he knows we're here. We need to pull out. Uh, and here I thought fiddlers stuck to roofs nowadays. You know, I'd much prefer you use that mental energy to get us the hell out of here. Oh, yeah. Because I can just waltz out of here looking like this. All we need is a little improv. Tony, arrest him. We'll escort him right out of the building. Huh. Good arrest? idea. Huh. That's March. We've got our man. Let's take... Officer... Okay, I don't... Huh. Okay. So we know Oscar's a patient, Mr. Director's a patient. Technic- I don't know what they mean by real patient. Because if you want to be technical, McMurphy's a patient, Maestro's a patient, Nellie, Spoon, Emily, James, and Clut. Which leave... Jennifer, Ray, George, Tony, and Elvira. If you want to say ghost, it sounds like Ray. See, I think... Hold on. I was just going to change Ray to George. See, yeah, so Ray is ghost. Because like I said, Klepp stole something from Ray. So, I don't know. Okay. We know Oscar's a patient. Technically, I'm going to say McMurphy isn't a real patient and Nellie isn't a real patient. Well, they say Nellie's a real patient, but I don't feel like she is. See, I don't know. Oh, this shouldn't be this many real patients. Because she said 44% of the patients here are real. So let me get the calculator out over here. Okay. So let's just go to the list. Okay, so we know that Oscar... So we know that McMurphy, Oscar, Mr. Director, Maestro, Nellie, Spoon, Emily, James, and Clep are all technically patients. So that's one, two, three, four... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine times point four four. It's about four people who are actual patients. So I'm gonna say Spoon and Maestro and Emily are patients for sure. I feel like it's Spoon, Maestro, Emily, and Clep. There should be more. Okay, so there's more than four, but there's not nine. Oh, I'm confused here. Okay. So Nellie is saying she's a reporter. We know James, okay, James is a patient. We know James is. Nellie says she's a reporter. Mr. Director claims that this was a reality show that he was let in on. Oscar seems like he's a method actor because he said, I've spent years, I spend months, like, studying. We know McMurphy is either undercover because, well, because he said, Tony, like, I didn't recognize you in uniform. So, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, so we know there's not, there's more, there's not nine, but there's not four. Uh, Jesus. Uh, this is taking a while. 
Um, Okay, so that time I didn't say. So there. Oh, shoot. Okay, so we had Spoon, Emily, James, Clep, and Maestro Mark. So there are five people who are the patients. So that was right. But who are the actual five? Uh. We know Ray isn't a patient. Hold on. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna walk around for a minute. Okay. So they say James acts like a caretaker. We know James acts like a caretaker. Emily just sits there and watches the TV. Clep goes and gives Emily the remote. Um, why is this so, I feel like Elvira and Tony could be lying. I really do feel like Tony and Elvira could be lying. Okay, we're gonna go back. Hello, welcome in officers. How can I help you? I heard your siren. I'm Elvira. This is my partner. Are you in charge here? Yeah, yeah. I am the administrator of this facility. To what do we owe this visit? You look a little young to be running this place. Anyway, we're here to investigate reports of an escape. Yeah, we know Maestro is a patient because he talks to George. We know Mr. Director and Club are patients. We know Oscar's a pa- well... We know Spoon's a patient. Right. Nellie says she's not. We know Ray, George, Jennifer are the doctors. Tony, Elvira, and McMurphy don't seem like they're real patients, but... I don't know. We know... I know Austin. Ah. Okay. Okay, I got it. Okay. Sorry, this was like, I wasn't like trying to guess, but it was mainly, I was trying to remember what everyone was saying. So that one was a little complicated um, since there were so many choices, but in combinations, but let's see what I missed the first time. Excellent work, detective. Wait. I have just one last question for you. Why is this? What, what, what's going on? I have just one <gasps> last question for you. Who are you? I told you. I told you. We're going to be number 68, right? We're, we're number 68. Okay, number 68. Hmm? Since you already know you're one of our patients, we'll move forward with your treatment. Here, this pill will help calm and center you. See, look, we can do like what they said. Cause look, we had the option of taking the pills or hitting her with the ashtray. And remember, Jennifer gets knocked out cold cause the ashtray, so we're gonna knock her out. Jennifer? What happened to you? Wake up! See, this is Ray now coming in.
Oh, that's kind of cool credit. I wonder if they're gonna go through like all the maps or if it's just gonna be... Because I don't know how many people actually worked on this game. Unfortunately, cannot read this, um, but I hope there is someone who can so that they can appreciate. I'll oh, see. Here we go. English. Interesting. did enjoy this game. Um, obviously, the last one was a little tricky for me, um, and I apologize for that. Thank you for suffering through it with me if you've made it this far. Well, as you can see, that is the end of Unheard. Um, I hope you enjoyed this game as much as I did. Uh, when I was looking on the Steam page, a lot of people were complaining how short this is, so there is only five cases, but they did write that there will be DLC that is free. So this game is only $6.99 in the Steam library, and you get free DLC in a couple months. So I highly recommend this game if you like mysteries and all that. So without further ado, uh, if, I hope you have a good evening, afternoon, morning, whatever time of the day it is when you're watching this. And I hope to see y'all next time.